All right, I'm hitting the record button and the enabling of live transcription has now happened. I will share my screen. All right. <clears throat> Um, so badging updates. I'm imagining that maybe Matt Cantu has this for us, but I could be wrong. I actually put that on there. Oh, well, Elizabeth, <laughs> so I think, go. I think this is actually news to Matt as well. So oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there we go. Um, we just had a meeting uh, for the DEI badging, and um, Kafaya and Katie and I decided uh, we would try an experiment, which is to change the meetings to a biweekly cadence. Um, to offset the Asia Pacific call and also um, that would enable us to switch to the chaos zoom because right now we're using uh, a UNO link and um, Matt won't always be at the UNO forever I don't think so don't <laughs> so we're just like you know, know. looking ahead and um, we are going to also start recording those meetings and posting them on to YouTube as well um, so anybody who misses that can pop in and see what was up um, and then the other update we had was to um, just to clarify or I guess confirm to everybody, we are going to be adding the event accessibility metric to the new uh, or to the latest release of the badging program. So um, we're going to we decided we wanted to add it even as its own section. Like right now, it gets one mention in one bullet point and we want it to like be more prominent. So we're going to add it as its own section. We're going to ask them. On the event accessibility metric, there's a long list of bullet points, a long list of ideas of how someone can attend to accessibility. We're going to ask about all of it um, because we just thought it was really important and it would also give ideas for people who weren't sure of what they should be doing or could be doing. So um, we have some logistical things to figure out with Matt um, C and Enoch about the bot but otherwise um, we that's uh, one of our goals is to uh, add that and and you know like i think one of the goals for the badging program has always been to make it a little harder for someone to get a gold badge so this is i think gonna you know really make people step up and and put this in the forefront and bake bake accessibility in to their event instead of just adding it on as an afterthought so um wanted to bring that to the group and ask if there's any questions or anything about that no, thanks for that. Do we have any current um, applications? We do not. Um, we are we're open right now. Um, I'm going to reach out to Rachel Braun. That was also discussed at the meeting um, just to see because we haven't gotten any applications from her in a while. Um, and I know that there are two, I, like I'm not even sure if she's still at the LF, um, but she was one of our big uh, applic applicators. Uh, uh, applicants. Applic applicants. That's the word I want. <laughs> I was like, applicators is not the right word. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so we want to we want to ask. I just wanted to see how she's how things are going with her. And, and um, OK, yeah. it might be nice to like if you connect with her to kind of tell her what the updates are. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah. So. We're looking at your screen, by the way. Sean. I know, I know. And I'm like, what? I clicked on something and it opened oh. up a window. So sorry about that. So those are the, all the badging updates for me. I'm done. OK. I don't hear any action items, just a, an update. So that sounds good. I assume you'll update that on the KS calendar. Yes. OK. <clears throat> I do have a couple of, uh, I, I have a, I guess a question, uh, moving on to Google Summer of Docs, and this was my item. Um, I am, so we need to have a single project, it appears. Um, all my reading of Google Summer of Docs, it, it's very different than Google Summer of Code, um, in that you don't have multiple projects, you just have one. And so I think I would ask this group to help us pick the one that we'll promote in our application. And I don't know if that's the handbook updates or website read. You know, I don't know what we would pick as a singular target for documentation updates. 
like I know, I know the general theme is inclusive language, but I think they need a need us to specify an object to work on. And so is that inclusive language across our metrics definitions? Is it inclusive language on our websites? Um, is it inclusive language in the amorphous everywhere, which I think is a harder project to frame. Um, it's just, I think it's inherently more ambiguous than if we pick specific targets. So with those thoughts, I will throw it out there for discussion. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. Um, I want to define a project for inclusive language and I was having a hard time without, I was having a hard time describing it without specifying targets. It's hard time. Like we said like our, our, like our outward facing assets or something like that. Okay. So that That's would also entail, a little bit, but well, sorry. It, so, so that would entail the published metrics and the website. That's right? what I think. Yeah. Uh yeah, and the community handbook then too. Yeah. Or it will be the knowledge base at that point. Community handbook. Yeah, I think we're kind of yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is the Google summer, this, the Google season of docs happens in parallel with the Google summer of code. So we'd probably have folks focus on the public website and the published metrics for, you know, through the middle of the summer, at least until we actually had a knowledge base and then perhaps engage them with that team. Yeah, sorry. I thought it was no, I, my big. No, no, it's 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 totally okay. It was very, it was kind of confusing to me. Essentially, it starts right around the same time, and then, but it can go through the end of November. Like November twenty sixth is the last date for us to have our, for the person to complete it and us to submit a bill for reimbursement and that sort of thing. I mean, I can work with public website published metrics and community handbook slash knowledge base. That gives that gives me a specific target to write the app around. If that if that works, but I'm open to other suggestions, of course, as well. I think that's a good. We I think we just have to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. And I yeah I wanted to I needed a specific somewhere, and these are specific enough that gives me room to room to go. So I don't necessarily need anything more than that. All right, so I will take the action item that I'm using that information to complete our application. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is our outreachy application, which I believe we actually have active at this time with funding thanks to Microsoft and Emma. Yep. So Microsoft is is going to sponsor one half of the um, of the cost. So thank you to Microsoft and thank you to Emma. And then chaos will uh, be covering the other half. So we've been talking to Sage. I think we're good. I haven't heard otherwise just in terms of you know like have, did we do everything correctly in terms of getting our project in there and all that kind of stuff no i haven't seen anything else either yeah i mean maybe, that, yeah i we, think it's i think there's some a lot of details that are missing that we um, have to go back to, that i wasn't sure I, about i okay. i think i think i might have so i think i might have filled those in um oh, awesome. when i completed the i had to complete a form to be a mentor and a lot of the things that you were messaging about on Friday, I believe that when I filled out my mentor application, I, I completed it and then Matt approved me as a mentor on the project. So I think, I don't know, it, I'm not, I can't like log in totally to see it, but I, I can't see the whole thing. So they're gonna, the intern project, the project list will be finalized March 25th, according to the timeline. <clears throat> so, okay. 
this this suggests to me that we are sort of waiting until March 25th. And then after March 25th, after re, essentially we'll have a month where we're fielding interest in our in our project from different people. And at some point after like an early, like in early May or late April, we'll be deciding how we are going to proceed. All right, you you are our mentor yeah. at this point, so thank yes. you. Yeah, I, I realized that as I was filling out the form, but we're all ready to go. And it says it's a May internship. Um, so we'll just wait to wait to um, get finalized as a project. And once we are a project, I think interns can reach out to us. And there's a one month period that they have approximately. Um, and accepted interns are announced announced in late May, so May 20th. So we have almost a month somewhere somewhere in between the final application deadline and the accepted interns, I would imagine that we are going to be selecting from amongst perhaps one or more interns. Cool. I'm just curious, have we planned anything for the contribution period that starts on March 25th? We do. We, we do have a project outlined. For, but is it for the, for, the internship or for the contribution period? It's for the contrib. Well, I think the contribution period and the internship are one and the same. I think. So they would so, be contributing to the project that we outlined, which is a, I believe it's a metric, um, a metric model. Is that right, Matt? I know you created the project. It's helping with a metric model, yeah. Yeah. But okay. Maybe Justin, what is the, what do you think, what is the contribution period? Yeah, so I think it's similar with GSOC, um, but for outreach, I'm starting on March 25th until April 20th, I think. 20, 22nd, it says, but yeah. April 22nd, yeah. So there's that one month period where you'll have a bunch of people show up to your project wanting to contribute who are all potential, they've gone through the initial review process without reaching, so they're eligible for uh, being selected as an intern. And part of that month, they're actually supposed to be documenting their, uh, their contributions and their activity while they're working in the project. Yeah. So it's always just, a, I'm also working on a outreachy project for UNICEF and I've been leading on that for the last couple of rounds. And one thing that I'm always trying to think of is like having some good first issues and things that can be quickly repeated by, you know, sometimes you might have a project that has one or two people show up. I've been in projects where sometimes you have 10 or 15 people show up. So I think just trying to map out, if you can, just what those good first issues might be or uh, good things that can be repeated by multiple applicants can be really helpful to survive the, the initial wave of, of, of applicants. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So this is okay. a period, this is a period, Justin, where like, I mean, there could be 10 people who have an interest in participating in chaos. We haven't made a selection at that point but they're just trying to contribute to the project to demonstrate interest in the chaos project. And we should have a way for them to contribute other than just kind of waiting and randomly maybe saying things on Slack or on the email list, you know, so these are identified things. So right? these are the, yeah, go ahead. Is that what you mean, Justin? Yeah, because I think with GSOC, it's a little more focused on them drafting a proposal of what the work will be. But for outreach yeah. during that yeah. one month. Okay. Yeah. So when they're actually, so when you go to review the interns who have applied to the chaos project, you'll actually get an additional like application that they've been filling out during that month. Like I've contributed I gotcha. here, I participate in these places. And uh, okay. so I guess as a, as a idea or something that I found really helpful, um, is to create well oh maybe let me ask first i don't know is it a, is it a software project or a documentation it project it's more software oriented gotcha this, this is but i th i think with the metric models it's very i would call it a documentation centric pro uh software oriented project because i think one of the significant gaps with the metric models is 
all of the documentation around them. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So what kind of tools would they be working with in the chaos ecosystem? I just pasted in um, Zoom chat the link to our interested candidates item, which doesn't really map directly to what we're so to the what doing what tool so i think justin the way that i kind of see this proposal playing out is um, you're familiar with the concept of metrics models where we bring together you know like whatever some set of atomic metrics together into a model um part of part of what we're trying to do with those metrics models is also include a deployable solution with them so like an example Jupyter notebook that would say here's how you can actually deploy it so it's not just here here's the concept of a metrics model but <laughs> here's an actual implementation model of it as well and so I really see this internship as as being a way to one share the model which we talked about today in the Asia Pacific call that could include some dynamic generation the model itself the document itself will be dynamically generated from a database um, but then also putting that model into practice using auger and the creation of a notebook um so i'm in in the course of looking at justin's thought here i found putting a link in slack chat when i actually look at the outreachy internships i don't see us list i don't see a project for us listed and so I'm wondering if so so by default the project missing. is hidden until March 25th because there's some organizations okay. that are still mm. being finalized okay. so on March 25th then the project will become visible to anyone who has successfully completed the initial application and has been vetted by the outreachy team as eligible for internship but by default it won't be like public you have to have an account and either be a mentor uh, or, or be a accepted applicant okay. to see the project profile. Um, okay. Just, so yeah, to that I'm... end, oh, go ahead. No. I was just going to share. So when I did a um, like three years back, I also did an outreachy project with Fedora. And when I ran that, one thing that I found really helpful, um, I'm going to share two links here in the chat just to give some examples. These were like the very first entry point tests that I used for that project to help make it easier because we had like 10, 20 people that showed up and it was really overwhelming. So the first issue was like, set up your development environment for this project and post a screenshot in the issue to verify that it's been done. Okay. The second one is here's this, this tool that we use as a message, as a messaging bus, set it up with the project and publish a, a test message to show that, to get familiar and comfortable with using this tool. And so those were issues that they never really closed during the mm -hmm. application process. They were always open. And um, it was also cool because sometimes applicants would go and help each other when one person was asking questions and made it a little bit easier on me to try to keep up with it all. But in addition to those uh, links I put in the chat that were like always perpetually open, then we'd have some specific issues that were still like lower hanging fruit it wasn't quite as difficult but they were more unique so they couldn't be repeated and those were really helpful for us and for the people who are really committed into the long term to work on those issues and it helped us distinguish the interns that we we ended up selecting for the internship that year okay um, but i think it's nice to have a mix of those things so that in that initial wave when you have all the outreachy applicants seeing the project for the first time on march 25th uh, you have some things you can always direct people to like, hey, you're looking to get started, start here, uh, set up a develop it, development environment and post a screenshot in the issue and so on. Uh, and then you can have some of those more distinguished tasks that are more unique and can't be repeated, but are still like lower hanging fruit. And that can be helpful to distinguish the different applicants from each other and ultimately who you'll probably go with for the internship. Um, but those are just some lessons learned from my side. I'm in the process of trying to like map out some of those same uh, issues now for for the project I'm running with this round. But yeah, um, so these would be some... these are the um, sort of qualifying tasks that that we have, and so 
at the bottom here, um, we have some, that's definition. Maybe, maybe this particular issue needs, I think this might need the, um, well, the micro tasks. They call them micro tasks. In uh, so you, Sean, you were, that was a Google season of docs. Yeah. So I, I, um, I went from, I don't know how I'm where, so, okay. So there, are a I got lost somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so Justin, I think maybe in the community repo where Sean is right now, one of the things we could do is create maybe a couple issues that are things like, um, to your point, like install Augur, you know what I mean? And show, uh, show a screenshot of your ability to install Augur, um, install Grimora Lab, for example, and show us your ability to install Grimora Lab. And so those are just open issues. They're not necessarily related to the project that we have in mind. I see a thumbs and 100%. <laughs> I'm <laughs> guessing that's a pretty good. So I think it would probably be the, the best way is just to go there. And so I think, okay, so. I'm just looking at Justin's example here. Sure. And I'm wondering, we should probably just even label those issues as good first issues and probably outreachy issues. Just yeah. to really signal to the students that these are two issues that if you want to work on, you can work on whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, of course, the students can, I would imagine. But here's a couple things that we do recommend. So what you're working on, Sean, I don't think is this is not the micro task. No, and so I don't think this is a season of docs thing. So I think this issue can just go away. Well, the it's so it's what we defined as our season of docs issue. I thought the season of docs was inclusive language. I thought, oh, wait a minute, you're right. This is outreachy. Oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> so just, you're correct. I got super confused. Yes. But, Sorry. but we don't want to put this in here yet. Because no. this this topic will be released to Justin twenty fifth by outreach. So I don't we don't want this issue in here. Okay. So in our outreachy app, there is a place for us to put an issue that links to our outreachy project. And we had put this much we had put the GSOC idea of the metric conversion rate in there. And so I was just moving it over to outreachy to make it more clear. But to it, Justin's point, this should not be open right now. No, and I don't think we'll ever need to have this open here. They okay. will see this issue through the outreachy interface. They will see this 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 project through the outreachy interface. So what we need okay. here, go to click on issues. Or just look need issues open. that are labeled good first issues. So then just click create new issue for a second. All right. And then we don't want that text. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it must be cached on my browser. And so now, just say like for the title, it's like outreachy engagement issue number one. Okay, number one. Okay. Yeah. I just I'm totally thinking about this. And then so then in the text, it would be like um, install Augur. you know, and show us a screenshot that you got it installed. I'm just cutting to the chase here. Yeah. Include your screenshot in this issue. And then we'll label this good first issue and we'll label it outreachy. Got it. Oh, <laughs> I do not know what happened there. Um, just, I think I brought that. up a dialog box by mistake somehow. Okay. I don't honestly so label know what this. I did. Label it good first issue. We don't have an outreachy issue, but we could make one. Yep. Make one. There we go. Oh, well, not red. All right. 
So now, and good first issue. I should have done that, but apparently I had not. Okay, so now this is so then we don't have to do it now, but then we'd have like outreach engagement issue number two, which mm -hmm. would basically just be install a Grimoire Lab yeah. <laughs> and show us some screenshots sure. that you're able to do that. You know, sure. we're just to yeah. Justin's point, we're just trying to get the students that to demonstrate that they can engage with some of the technologies in the project, that they're willing to take the time to go through that process and that's absolutely. it absolutely okay justin did i get that right i think i did yeah and then i think you know also just adding any documentation like links because what you can use those issues as is really the entry point when you have people i'm going to guess you probably put the slack as the community yes. uh, platform in the outreach portal you could even have an outreachy channel on Slack and direct oh. people there. And when they come in, just having like, hey, like pending a message, like here's the places to start. Issue engagement issue number one, issue number two. And so that way people can come in and immediately get that information right off the bat, go there and jump in. And then if they have questions, they can ask in the issue um, or in the Slack. But you can just kind of use the issue to aggregate all the, the doc documentation getting started guides, those, those kinds of things too. That sounds good. Yeah, we may want to provide some direction in that issue of like, here's how you do that. If that's, if the issue is the first point of contact, then yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to be quick on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, yeah, For yeah. future reference, we might want to add that in, yeah. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay, I created a second issue for Grimoire Lab while we were talking about that. So we have um, two issues. And I created the Outreachy Oops, that's not, I keep going back and forth between Outreachy and Google Summer of Docs in the notes, so excellent. And I just want to bring up that we talked about this yesterday in the community meeting, but I know there are some on this call that couldn't make that meeting. Um, we did talk about having a central person to kind of manage all of these mentorship programs. So that is something we're working on figuring out. Because um, now that we, you know, we're, it, we've got our hands in so many places, it's, it's obviously, as we can see, kind of confusing to keep them all straight. And we want to make sure we're giving the best experience we can for our newcomers and yeah. our students. So I just want to clarify that that is something that, you know, managing this whole process for all of these different programs and what's required for each uh, is is a lot of work so we're trying to sort out the best way to do that moving forward so just to clarify okay i mean honestly just listening to your talk I'd, i'm thinking like the this is something that in the DEI audit team, this is a, isn't actually a recommendation that came up from the DEI audit from last year about managing internships or the mentorship programs. Um, that might be actually, something. Go ahead, John. I think it fits really well. Like doing this well is important. Yeah, and it might be something that if somebody on the team was looking for a way to engage in the chaos project this might be one of the this could be potentially one way mm -hmm. just to help in the management of mentorship programs i'm just thinking out loud at the moment but just because that the the support from the ford foundation goes for two years and if yeah. we can have somebody on the team any of us on the team that were interested in doing that not only could it provide support for two years, but then also probably document like how to think about managing mentorship programs. Yeah, no, as opposed think... to like, oh, we're, this is due in a week. Let's let's do Google Summer of Code. What do you mm -hmm. What do y'all say? Like how to yeah. thoughtfully think through your mentorship. <laughs> Christy is volunteering to help with this. That would be awesome. Thanks. 
thank you because i think i think we have been so busy in the tornado of doing these mentorship programs and being active within them that we haven't stepped back and thought about it so i think christy your perspective could be very helpful for us I think thank it's, you it's, yeah um, I can prepare any document. We can also talk on what you like need, and I can try to put the document together and work on it. And we can have like uh, documentation on how to proceed with the mentorships. But I can I can take care of it. That'd be great. And thinking about how to through our own mistakes, like not be reactionary to mentorship programs, <laughs> like how to how to look out on the horizon. Um, and maybe even like, like what constitutes a new mentorship program within a project would probably be something to think about. Um, like, I, I think sometimes we're just like, oh yeah, uh, se uh, season of docs. Like, sure, let's just do that because it's a Google thing. Like, <laughs> let's just do it because. Um, but the reality is, is it might show up right in the middle of outreachy and it might show up right you know and you're just like we just don't have the capacity to overlap uh, things like that where we almost have like a timeline of available i'm just so we're less reactionary would be cool and it, it does seem like a lot of these show up all at once doesn't it it does <laughs> and i suppose that's because in the northern hemisphere the summer is the same and all of these programs are geared around a northern hemisphere's summer yeah Hey, Christy, um, something else that we was brought up at that meeting yesterday um, by Sophia was um, that we don't really have any way to track um, track like metrics around these or track the success of these or like, is this a, pro a project, you know, that had an impact on chaos? Like, was it worthwhile? You know, the, the projects that the students complete. And um, so there was a lot of like um, tracking and and metrics ideas around um, the level of impact and and the success of the projects as well. So just some other ideas throwing at you here. Sorry, <laughs> but it, I thought Sophia did bring up some good points yesterday. So um, yeah, thank you. This feedback helps me also to have a clearer um, perspective on uh, what to work on. So that's good. Thank you. I just put some thoughts down, having filled out a bunch of this stuff in the last month and a half. Things that, and having done Google Summer of Code three or four times, I can't remember if it's been three or four times before. I know at least three. I think it was maybe, f no, I think it's three. So anyway. So should this be a task? Is this a task that we can continue to come back to within this working group? Or does it belong somewhere else is my question. I think this is a very reasonable place. I do too. Is, I, yeah. Okay. Excellent. That gives me a place to come back and give thoughts on it then. Good. Any other discussion of outreachy, summer of docs, other things? Season of docs? So the last item is the DEI project board, which I think is something Matt created and wants us to show. Uh, Justin created it and I, oh, okay. I copy Justin in our other working groups. <laughs> well, nice job, Justin. I make, is this too big for folks' screens? No, it's fine for me anyway. Christy, is it okay for you? The size of the share? Okay. Yes. So Justin, if you just wanna walk us through what we have here. I can walk. I mean, it should be okay, fairly. Or, yeah, I think it's. I think it is. I think it's. I think it is for anyone who's used a Kanban before, but for folks who haven't, it might be less obvious. Well, I think didn't Elizabeth? Didn't we add a column in this one? Like, like on hold or waiting? Or revisit or something like later. That. Yeah, that yeah. Column on the left. Oh yeah, like revisit that. later. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, and the reason. So this one is about working with uh, doing some interviews to get a better idea of what are uh, issues around DEI within projects. And right now the, the goal, I think Justin, you just made a comment on it. The hope is, is that we can um, 
kind of coordinate this with OSS EU and do some interviews there. So that's kind of on hold till later, <laughs> until OSS EU. Um, we have a series of metrics ideas, which is the next column right there. Uh, I think really the, the hope, I, I have a sincere hope right now that we can really focus on revisiting our old metrics more than creating new metrics for the um for the next round i was kind of thinking about this just across all working groups like if i was a if i was a researcher and and we were able to do the work that we have done and and you know kind of identify the metrics that we've identified to this point i'd be very satisfied with the 70 or so metrics that we've developed and there is just a point kind of from a work perspective, no problem, Justin, yeah. um, just as from a work perspective or even kind of from my research perspective that I feel like sometimes there's a point of diminishing returns on metrics. And I don't know if we. Yes, endlessly creating metrics probably does at some point to become an activity of diminishing concerns and. Yeah, and yeah. occasionally, right, a new metric could really kind of right like when we do these interviews, if everybody's like, oh, my goodness, like this is something that we need to measure. And it has just not been something that we have addressed, maybe rightfully so. Um, but boy, I mean, we have a lot of metrics and I don't know, that's just a thought. I'm not sure if any, Sean, you apparently agree a little bit, but I, I do. I, I think I think there's a limit. You know, so to continue to press forward creating new metrics is probably less useful than to create these metric models and working examples of them. And improve the, like, kind of revisiting our, yeah. <laughs> revisiting the metrics that we have and making yeah. them better and stronger. I think so. I, I think because what the newcomers are showing up looking for working examples of the metrics in some kind of software, and they're showing up looking for, okay, great, you have 70 some metrics, but how do I use them? And so I think, I think pausing and saying, well, developing new metrics isn't maybe the top priority for the folks who are stakeholders in chaos right now. Right. <clears throat> um, okay. I mean, and I, I, I would suspect that in most of our working groups, we've identified the, <laughs> the big primary metrics. Yeah, we I, have. I'm, I'm suspecting we have. I, I think we have. I, I think, yes, I think I think we have. I think in a few of the working groups, there are some that will emerge. I think risk is emergent. Fair enough. There are new ideas that come up regularly because of current US national priorities. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that all of the working groups have that sort of constant emergence right now. You have a comment, Elizabeth, you're unmuted. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, I don't know that it has to be an either or situation. Like, I, I know you're, I don't know that you're actually suggesting we, we totally stop creating no, new no. ones. Because we do have quite a backlog of ideas that I would hate to just discard or not get to ever. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I totally understand what you're saying. But I also think that, like, that is part of our, our, um, what's the word I want? Part of our, a role in the community is to continually be bringing more ideas to the table and not just rehashing old ideas also. So um, I would I would hate for us to like lose the, not that we are cutting edge, but I would hate for us to like lose our, you know, as the kind of trailblazers of like, here are different ways to think about it just because we are so focused on our technical debt. Um, so I just want to throw that out there that I, I hope we don't totally lose that piece because I, I think that that's part of our allure and part of our interest that people come yeah. we are constantly re, you know pushing more inter interesting new things out there so yeah I, I agree I, I think it's the I think maybe what I'm suggesting and I think Matt is probably suggesting is that we have additional fo focuses for the research group that are meeting the newcomers where they're coming to us now and those aren't always new metrics i don't think the creation of new metrics probably ever goes away but it's perhaps not the only significant construction activity that occurs during the working group meetings is yeah right that's fair it. that's yeah that's fair no i i agree i hear you 
Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's reasonable to say we're just done creating metrics forever. I don't and I don't think that's what we are saying. So well, I mean, maybe part of me too. I mean, maybe I'm pushing a little bit on we need to revisit our old metrics because I, I think we think had so. this conversation last cycle. Mm -hmm. And they're really we really didn't revisit a lot of metrics. That's no. all. And I think and I think in the last cycle we didn't. Like I know in the two working groups where I'm most active, we didn't revisit them because we were gunning for the next release to have metrics that we wanted out. out. Yep. Now we have a, a pause. And I think- I know Elizabeth and I are supposed to be like <laughs> doing something. <laughs> we I, I think you volunteered to read through yeah, all of the I'm metrics like and identify- I'm like criticizing myself for- <laughs> Right? I'm like, oh, why, why? Why do I come to these meetings? I'm gonna stop well, showing I mean, up. And in, in many in many ways, it's a it's it's kind of one of these grind through it tasks. You just go to a metric, you read it. If you think it needs to be revisited, make a few specific comments about what needs to be revisited, and throw it over to the working group to revisit it. Right? Yeah. All right. Let's just do an action item right now, Elizabeth. You you have a working group that you particularly um I it, whatever it doesn't matter. All right, what, I think Kevin, I to, Kevin also agreed to do it so we can assign him one if we want. Okay. I, I would love to see fresh eyes on the evolution metrics. Those are some of our earliest metrics. I'll take that. And, and um, okay. Elizabeth has evolution. And, uh, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, I'll do DEI while we're on this call. So I'll take a look at these metrics here. Okay. Um, one quick thing I want to throw out. Uh, that was brought up at the Asia Pacific call this morning was the idea of doing these dynamic uh, creation of the metrics. And I don't want to overwhelm, but if we decide to go to that model for the metrics models group, like it might be too meta to create the actual atomic metrics dynamically, but it would help us add in like common language across all the metrics in one fell swoop. Like if we wanted to change that disclaimer on, you know, the private privacy data, yeah. if we wanted to change that link, we could do it at one place and it would pull. But I don't, that might be too complicated. I don't know. So I'm I don't think it's, I think Kevin would know if it's complicated from a process perspective because he publishes the website. It reminds me of old member server site includes. Oh yeah. Back in, <laughs> back in the day. Are you calling me a boomer, Matt? Is to, that, is that yeah. <laughs> Okay. You're not a boomer. You're you're Gen <laughs> X all the way. I am Gen X, hundred percent. So yeah, that's a good idea. Like it wouldn't be the entirety of the metric, but it could certainly be parts of it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Where every metric gets this header, every metric gets this footer, every you know whatever it is. So yeah, yeah. and some text. Right, that's a good idea. But being a Gen Xer, I also will give the idea, but then implementing is a lot of work. So I'll just leave that to somebody yeah, else. I gotta go, I gotta go relax and yeah. chill somewhere else. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a great meme on the internet where it's a, uh, you know, say what you want about Gen Xers, but you have to admit our seething distrust of everything was hundred percent correct. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, that's a, that's a good idea. Okay. I'm going to send an email, Elizabeth, to you and me and Kevin to go check out for the metrics review. Okay, I was actually thinking about doing a call, but I don't know what we need to add another call. We also were going to go through the community repo as well and like come together on a thing so we can add that. Where, where a call for this might be useful not to advocate for another call is just in arriving at a common approach. I, th I think if you have four people or three people going off and doing these reviews without having talked through the approach together, you might we might not land on the same sort of scope and ethic of providing feedback. I think Don't you and Matt, I think you and Matt are likely to because we've talked about it a lot, but Kevin hasn't been in a lot of these discussions. Don't we have a checklist for reviewing an old metric somewhere? Probably in the handbook. <laughs> Maybe it's, you know. it's part of the template, yeah. So we can just go off that, I guess. Yeah, uh, if we had, had, what I was going to suggest is the first step is just just kind of to your point, Sean. Just read the metric, and if you feel like it needs to be updated, I don't really particularly care how at this point. <laughs> like if you're feeling yeah. like it's a little bit old, can you just put a check mark by it? 
You know what I mean? And then we'd at least like Elizabeth, you could come to the table and say there are like five evolution metrics that probably feel a little bit clunky. I just sometimes it's I, I would like us to have something to talk against if we do meet. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm happy to share the labor of this process as well. I would just ask not to review metrics and working groups where I've been super active. So that would narrow it down to, well, not evolution or risk. Those are where right, you get comments on it. Okay. I think we're a little off on DEI stuff, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> when you say a little, this is an Sorry, operation. everyone. Well, I, th I mean, here. yeah, I guess it is a little bit, but I think I think the this actually sort of speaks to the inclusive naming project that we've defined for um, Google's season of docs. This actually provides a little bit of um, structure to the pro the project that I would outline there. So, in that sense, it's good. Thank you. I can apply it to something DEI related is what I'm saying. So this, I think we've reached the end of the agenda and we're nearly at the end of time. Is there anything else that anyone wants to share? We need a, we need a facilitator for next time. I may not be here next week, okay. so. I will be here next week. Um, I can facilitate again if nobody else wants to, but I welcome others i do believe that i am going to get it then i can facilitate next week oh so, did you say yeah. you can facilitate next week justin you did okay you're yeah. done yeah. All right, I'm now I'm just. Um... Justin, I hope you feel better. Thanks, I, I hope I wasn't like <laughs> totally congested when I was the start. <laughs> but, Your voice yeah, is I, very deep, it's yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and next week should be, should be fine, so plus I'll be. I was a little like a little unsure if it was COVID, but yeah, I'm going to come back later. So I've never just, done this, you know, like, kind of gold and still a thing. Yeah. So I will, I will stop recording now. <laughs>